Hello and welcome to the Blue Dragon Buzz podcast. I'm here with Mr. Arisman, the new chemistry teacher and high school science teacher. Welcome. Thanks. So today we have a few questions for you. Um, let's just jump right in. Okay. Um, where are you from originally? Like, where'd you go to high school? So I went to high school in Parkston. Uh, I was, I graduated 14th out of my class of 57, if I remember right. I think it's like one of the biggest classes Parkston's ever had. Um, yeah. Um, where did you start teaching? Like, which school did you first teach at? Sure. So, you want me to fill in the gaps in between there? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, after high school, I went to SDSU up in Brookings, and I got my degree in microbiology. Mm-hmm. I picked up two minors, uh, biology and philosophy. Uh, and then I just really liked helping all of my you know, classmates, all, all the other people in the hall, with composition, physics, calc, bio, chem. So I just, I found a one-year teacher prep program where I student taught at a middle school in Rapid and a high school in Douglas, uh, or at Douglas High School. And then I had a long-term substitute uh, at an alternative high school. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was kind of my first real year teaching. Uh, And then after that, my first, like, real contract was at... Uh, West Central, where I taught physical science and chemistry. Awesome. Um, what made you... Hold on, I got a question. Mm. Did you say psychology minor? Philosophy. Oh, philosophy minor? That Yeah, it's uh, you don't see that very often, right? <laughs> no, that's, uh, I'm, uh, what was the interest in it? I just really liked uh, ethics. So, oh, yeah. I'm um, just kind of learning like all the different ways of how different... You know, groups of people or individuals, you know, figure out, like, <laughs> what's the right choice to make here? And just all of those different theories was really interesting. Does chemistry, physics, philosophy, <laughs> they don't really go hand in hand here. No, <laughs> uh, I did take a philosophy of science course, but it was taught by a logic professor who was, oh. like, taking all of these, like, big statements and reducing it down to, like, well, if this is X and this is Y... I like learned nothing about the philosophy. Of I was say it's like you, you're like trying to be two different people almost. Now. <laughs> right, right. Sorry, I, I had to interrupt. Yeah. Um, our next question is: What made you decide to come to Garrettson High School? I had been at T for seven years. Um, they had uh, kind of lost their entire uh, science department. And so I kind of got a call just asking, hey, you know, were you thinking of wanting to teach something else? Uh, and so I went to T where I was able to teach uh, chemistry. Uh, and then I picked up physics there and I fell in love with physics. Uh, I was also able to teach uh, a couple of kind of health science classes mm-hmm. uh, that had a lot of really cool experiments in them dealing with genetics and stuff. Um, those courses kind of changed, and, and the school was getting really, really big and stuff. Where yeah. It was just it was getting too big um, for, like, staff to really, um, really be heard, I guess is how mm-hmm. I would put it. And I always uh, wanted to kind of be in a kind of a smaller school just where you get a little bit more – you get a better chance to get to know the students. Mm -hmm. Like I was having my honors, I had an honors physics class of 35 students in a classroom like the size of like my lecture room and trying to do physics experiments with, which required quite a bit of space. Yeah. uh, With 35 students in one room like that was just impossible. Like I, I had to set it up where I had half the students in my room doing the lab and the other half out in the hallway working on stuff. But even then, I was having to, like, split my time. Yeah. And it was just, it was getting too big, and I wanted a chance just to be able to connect with students a little bit more. Um, I think I already know the answer to this question. But um, what is your favorite class to teach? Like, what, like, chemistry or physics? or Oh, content-wise? Yeah, content. Uh, I really, really like the physics stuff. Mm. Like, in chemistry, even just today, like, yesterday with covalent bonding, we learned about following the octet rule 
um, which is these atoms want to look like they have eight outer shell electrons. And then we turn around today, and it was like, all right, now we're going to learn how to break the octet rule, because three elements can do that. Whereas with physics, there's none of these exceptions. Like, the physics rules are the physics rules. Yeah. And it all boils down to very, very basic, like, algebra one formulas that allow us to relate different, you know, aspects of just life together, like, like, velocity right mm -hmm. it, it, it's a change of position over time you can rearrange that formula to find any of the other two and there's no exceptions right if you have the numbers you have the formula you can predict exactly um what's going to happen and stuff and it just i really like the lack of gray area yeah i wanted to take physics but uh didn't really fit my schedule this year next, next year, year. Yeah. yeah did you think he was gonna say chemistry no i thought i knew he was gonna say physics oh okay i, okay. I was um, curious this one relates to chemistry. Okay. What is your favorite element and why? <laughs> I'm going to have to go with gallium. Uh, and it's not like, for me, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm not like a super ultra science nerd. Like, yeah. like, I do love science and stuff, but I'm not like, like my daughter, I have a four-year-old daughter, and she has a lot of science and stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't get her any of it. It's just, they just assume I'm a science teacher. <laughs> you got to get her science stuff. Um, <laughs> so it's not like, like, I would say it, it's gallium just because it's non-toxic mm -hmm. and it melts at human body temperature. So it's solid and you could hold it in your hand and it'll melt and it'll form like a little puddle in your hand. And then as soon as you like let it go, and it, uh, it goes it back to solidifies. solid. solidifies, Yeah. It's either that or it's going to be oxygen just because, and not because, oh, we need it. For <laughs> it's liquid oxygen is magnetic. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's just wild. It that responds to a magnetic field. And it's just like, why would oxygen, a non-metal, do this? Whereas everything else that responds to a magnetic field are neodymium, oh. uh, iron, cobalt, nickel. Like, they're all metals. Yeah. So the fact that liquid oxygen, <laughs> yeah, it's just cool. Yeah, we do a lot of top five lists in here, like our top five favorite like fast food joints and stuff. Yeah, so oh, sure. we should have we should have thrown that at you. Like, be prepared to give us your top five elements. Oh but. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that we kind of know you as a teacher, we're gonna get to know you as a person. Okay. What is your dream car, and why is that car your dream car? All right, dream car is a 1968 Camaro. I just think there's just nothing. That is I, as iconic as that car. I just think it's a gorgeous car. It, you know, it, it sounds great. And I, it, it's just cool, right? Yeah. I just, a 1968 Camaro is the definition of cool. You don't need to explain that to me. That's exactly my dream car as oh, well. Oh, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, uh, if you had to eat the same meal every day, what would it be? Like, exact same meal. That one's tough. I... Are you normally... Do you normally, like... Does it have to be variety? Or are you somebody who's like, I'm going to pack a sandwich every day? I I'm going to be honest. Like, I do eat the exact same thing every day. It's normally cheese sticks and pretzels and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, but that's just because I just don't want to put the effort into yeah, it. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, a lot of that goes to me, too. Where I'm just like, yeah, I'm just kind of lazy with it. And but. I it like, and I'm, I'm the one that cooks supper at home. And, like, I'll admit, I'm in a rut. Like, I've got a two-week kind of rotation on yep. me. Just because if it was every week, that would be too much. Yep. If I had to choose one meal, like, I might just have to go with burritos. Just because my man, you, you that's got, mine too. You can change the meat. Uh, you've got the rice there. I love rice. You can change the salsa. You can change the amount of cheese. I just like. I think burritos are they're flexible enough. Yeah. Even keeping it kind of within what a burrito is, without kind of going into weird. Things There's still more stuff. variety than right. anything else. Yeah, that's, and that's a good answer. easy. Like it could still like exactly. make every burrito is like kind of simple. Like at the same yeah, time, right. like you can ver you can have the variety and keep it simple. You don't have to sit there and cook. Do a bunch of different things. So you got a rice cooker. You just just put the rice on. It'll cook in time. Just cook up your meat. You just yeah. pull out whatever condiments you want out of the fridge. Couldn't agree more. Go burritos, most flexible food. <laughs> um, what animal has the most interesting anatomy, in your opinion? Oh, wow! I didn't vet these questions. That is so a I'd deep question. Yeah, I'm gonna go with starfish. 
Like, if you want to yeah. look at, like, especially once you start just dissecting it and stuff, like, once you open up a starfish, you're just like, this is not like any other animal I've ever looked at. Like, because most animals are have bilateral symmetry, right? They mm-hmm. have left, right? Whereas a starfish, like, it looks like something from a sci-fi movie. It's just crazy. I went right to marine animals, too. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, it's got to be octopus squid, something. <laughs> but that's right what I went to. Yeah, dissecting the starfish in Heimler's room was it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, really weird. But um, This is a would you rather. Would you rather always be hot or always be cold? Oh, I love being hot. Like, really? I don't put shorts <laughs> on until it's 95 out. Wow. That's it's just like. I I hate being cold. Yeah. So part of it is I think I think I have this theory that everybody has an age that influences the temperatures that they're comfortable with. Yeah. And my dad was a marine, so I like I was born in Southern California. We lived in South Carolina. Uh, then when I was like five, we were living in Yuma, Arizona, which mm-hmm. is like right on the border of California and Mexico. It's surrounded by desert. And so I loved it when it was hot, right? Like it wasn't too hot to play outside until it was, like, 115. You know, we'd get, like, one big thunderstorm Jeez. a year, and yeah. afterwards we'd go out and have mud ball fights. So I'm, yeah. I'm miserable listening to you talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> for, for me, the heat, like, when you're out in, like, warm, humid air, it's like you're just wrapped in a blanket. It's just awesome. I would rather be cold all the time because, like, you can do stuff to <laughs> fix that. When you get too hot, you can only go to a certain point. See, like I disagree. Like once you wear too many layers, you're now just like you're unable to move. You're like, you're <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a good point. Um, what is your favorite movie of all time? Oh, okay. So I'm a bit of a cinephile, mm. and I don't think you can have one favorite movie. I think you'd have to break it down by genre. I agree. But I would say my favorite genre is probably horror movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I'm a huge, like, superhero fan and stuff, but horror movies are kind of my go-to. How disappointed are you right now? Because of we just did a Friday the 13th we trivia did. challenge, and oh, Josh I, killed it. I killed it. Yeah. 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 So that, was, I, that was a fun video. Part of me wants to, like, <laughs> throw out some questions and see, like, where your knowledge is. but. Uh, so I'm going to say, like, I'll pick my favorite movie out of my favorite genre. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the original Night of the Living Dead. Oh, it's all black and white. It's yep. got this like super like depressing ending. Mm-hmm. And I just think even without like without being gory, like they, they actually had to make the situation scary. And it wasn't about jump scares. It wasn't about mm-hmm. gore. It was mm-hmm. literally just about the tension and the fear of just being in that situation. And the yeah. music and the sounds like they were so good at in black and white, like yeah. making you feel it. Just they with they like had the music, to be, like, yeah. You couldn't, and yeah. George Romero, he's just he's the master of zombie horror. But Return, I hated it. Return of Living Dead, yeah. I, I like it for what it is. I like it now, like like okay. where it's like brains, you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, seeing it, but it's, it's so bad, it's good. It's, I just yeah, love the line good. where he gets he, he goes into the ambulance. And more paramedics. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is awesome. I, I say it because I just watched it like two nights ago. It was just on HDNet or whatever that channel okay. is or whatever. And I was like, I haven't seen this for like four years. And I'm like, yeah, it's so bad. It's I can't stop watching it. But And then when you go into like like Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, I just yeah. those are also just awesome movies. But Night of the Living Dead, the original, yeah. my favorite movie. I would say mine is my favorite horror movie uh, would probably be the thing, the original. That is thing. good. Yeah, that's a great movie. I took that question <laughs> off of it actually Did? about the thing. Um, I can't remember what it was in our trivia contest. It was something about I named the movie where they're in Antarctica and oh, or, I would have got or whatever. So but I, I when I went through the questions because I had a hundred questions to go you through. Hundred. Yeah, oh and I got it down to forty or whatever. But I had a yeah. couple girls like we've never heard of the thing. I'm like, really? Oh, maybe this isn't. Popular. Read a book. It's it's really <laughs> it's really not as popular as. Okay, I, I have a question here, so I'm going to ask you one. Okay. In Jeepers Creepers, the creeper rises every how many years to feed? Oh, I only saw Jeepers Creepers once. Like one time, yeah, I feel I like I did too. I don't even think I remember that the came answer. Out when I was in, was I still in high school? 
Maybe, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I was trying to think of that too. This is one that I think Josh got wrong. That's why I asked. I did. With, I did get it wrong. I'm gonna go with fifty. Twenty three years. Twenty three. Okay. Because I gave him the answer, and they all went, "Why is it such a random year?" I'm like, yeah, because oh, I was thinking, I was thinking like twenty five, a hundred, you know, even or not even, but like, yeah, normal numbers. I think right. like seven or ten was guess. Yeah. Or Thirteen. Yeah. Um. One more. What kind of allergy does Charlie have in Hereditary? Have you ever seen Hereditary? Yes, I loved that movie. That ending came out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, super disturbing. She is allergic. Did I get this one right? To yeah. I'm gonna get this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'll say bees. I'm gonna go with uh, what is that? Uh, my girl. I'm gonna go with my girl. I'm gonna go with bees. <laughs> my girl. Uh, it's a nut allergy. <laughs> okay, I was I thought about just going the, with the. It's yeah. gotta go with the obvious. Yeah, the yeah. first group guessed. I think I seasonal. Think they guessed bees first. Oh yeah, they, no. They did, Addy they, said seasonal. They, Macy yeah, came seasonal. back with let's go with bees, and then he said I don't know peanuts or whatever. Yeah. So I gave him credit. Yeah. But. All right. Um, this is a deep question. I don't know why it's in here, but um, do you think technology made the world better or made it worse? That is deep. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What kind of an answer can I give without getting in trouble? <laughs> um, yeah, I told the line. <laughs> right. I think, I think the answer is both. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think technological advances that have made it easier to, to share information, uh, you know, of any kind, like whether we're talking about research into medical advances, like having that being able to be more easily shared. Um, so uh, even like poor countries can, can benefit from, you know, very, very high-end medical research. Like that's a good thing. Uh, people being able to more easily access information about like local news, mm-hmm. national news, um, being able to know like what our elected officials, uh, you know, are doing and stuff. Like I think that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because these things can be completely – uh, misdirected, right? Like um, the whole misinformation uh, stuff, um, you know, being able to mislead consumers about different products, stuff like that. Um, and then even like like nuclear power. Uh, nuclear power, I think, is a really, really uh, cheap, cost-effective, mainly clean way to, of making electricity. That's a good thing. But... Like, I can't even imagine what life would be like without nuclear weapons, right? Without that that threat of always being, you know, that the whole doomsday clock. Like, Mm -hmm. my entire life, we've always been within five minutes to midnight. Yeah. And imagining a world before that, like, I can't. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just, it's impossible to to know. We have the ability to wipe out all life on Earth. That didn't exist before 1945, Mm -hmm. so... Um, so it technology is both. It is both a, a great thing, uh, and it's also a, a super terrifying thing. Yeah. Well, I hate to end it on we're such a dark question. We're not going to because you guys were telling me about yeah. Mr. Erisman's magic tricks. That's what I was – yeah, I was going to – So, okay, your that. transition. I want to make I, sure that we hit that. I mentioned to them that when I came in to retake my quiz or test or whatever, you were learning a magic trick. Okay. And yeah, I do like to watch uh, uh, magic trick videos every now and then. Okay, mm-hmm. so just a normal deck of cards. It's not like an unopened one. I just grab one from the classroom. But this is a normal, <laughs> just kind of deck of cards. Can confirm it is right? normal. Yeah. I love magic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and like the the pen and teller show. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it's yep. just fun just to watch some of those. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just gonna give it a couple shuffles. Like it's already kind of shuffled up. Okay. You can go ahead. You can take a card. All right. Okay. So you're looking at it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Okay. You can show it to the camera. Uh, yeah. yeah, I need to see it. I show, show, the, show, show the card. Yeah. yeah we got, we got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do, is I want you to go ahead and just push it right in there. Right in the middle. Yep. And then keep doing it. Try to try to pull. There, there you go. go. Okay. Oh yeah. Right, check your hood. I'm excited. Check, check your hood. Hood? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, <laughs> oh I thought he. Okay, so but we you are going to do this. Okay, so you put your card in here. Yep. Okay. So there's the deck. Mm-hmm. You put your card in here. Okay. 
what's that? Is that one card that's backwards? Is that your card? Was it the three of diamonds? <laughs> How did you do that? Wow. That was that's yeah. magic, right? <laughs> that's that magic. was impressive. Okay. A magician never tells. <laughs> right. That was good. That was my card, yeah. Right. Impressive. <laughs> I'm so glad I told you to bring a deck of cards. When you watch <laughs> it, though, you guys know what I did, so... That was we'll be slowing it down. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. super easy. We're going to edit this video, easy. and we're going to zoom we're all just, the way yeah. in on it. We're going to be <laughs> analyzing it for 20 minutes, just like, how did you do that? Know, you're going to get it right away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wrap it up now? Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Erisman. Uh It's been nice getting to know you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And um, if, if you haven't had a chance yet, uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Scary Movie Trivia, if you're a horror movie fan, um, some of the answers got... Got on there as I was trying to scroll through, but yeah. otherwise, um, pretty fun. Josh killed yeah. it, so. Go watch me dominate. Uh, that's going to do it here for the Blue Dragon Buzz. Thanks for watching.